we have completed mesh analysis and now we are going to understand how to perform nodal analysis and in step number three of mesh analysis we developed the KVL equations and therefore mesh analysis is based on KVL on the other hand nodal analysis is based on KCL we will understand how it is based on KCL but first we will quickly revise what is a node node is the common point where two or more elements are connected and when two elements are connected the node is known as simple node it is known as simple node and when more than two elements are connected then the node is known as principal node and we know at simple node current division does not takes place and at principal node current division takes place now when we perform the nodal analysis then by node we mean principal node so whenever I say node then it means principal node and current division takes place at principal node therefore we can write down the KCL equation and in order to understand the use of KCL equations in nodal analysis we need to understand the steps required to perform the nodal analysis so let's move on to the steps required to perform the nodal analysis in step number one we identify the total number of nodes this means we identify the total number of principal nodes and if you remember the mesh analysis there in step number one we identified the total number of meshes and here we are identifying the total number of nodes and in step number two we assign the voltage at each node and in mesh analysis we assigned the current in each mesh and here we are assigning the voltage at each node and out of all the nodes we are having we take one node as reference node it is known as datum and the potential of the reference node we take as zero volt this is one important point we take the potential equal to zero volt at the reference node and you can have any other potential but in that scenario we won't call it nodal analysis so remember this point now we will move on to step number three and in step number three we develop the kcl equation for each non-reference node out of all the nodes available we took one node as the reference node and the remaining nodes are known as non-reference nodes and for non-reference nodes we develop the KCL equations and therefore we say nodal analysis is based on KCL and in step number four we solve the KCL equations to get the node voltages and after having the node voltages we can perform the calculations according to the given question now we will solve one example problem to understand how to apply all these steps but first we will talk about few important points related to nodal analysis in point number one we will talk about applicability of nodal analysis it is applicable for both planar and non-planar networks mesh analysis was applicable only for planar networks it was not applicable for non-planar networks but nodal analysis is applicable for both planar and non-planar networks point number two is related to number of equations required to solve an electrical network using nodal analysis if e is the number of equations then it is equal to n minus one where n is the number of nodes so remember this formula now we will move on to the example problem 
and in this example problem we are required to find the value of current i using nodal analysis and when you look at the network you will find current i is the current in this branch now we will solve the example problem according to step number one we are required to find out or you can say identify the total number of nodes and by nodes we mean principal nodes this means we need to identify the common point of connection where more than two elements are connected and here we have one such point more than two elements are connected you can see this element this element and this element there is one more node which is the principal node that is this one so we are done with step number one the number of node is equal to two now in step number two we will assign the voltage to all the nodes and one node is taken as reference node now you need to understand one important point related to reference node the reference node is the node at which the potential is equal to zero and it is advised to take the reference node as the node where maximum branches are connected but we will always take the bottom node as the reference node this will only increase one term in the equation and it will not make much of a difference so we will take this node the bottom node as the reference node and the potential at this node is equal to zero volt therefore we have connected it to the ground because potential of the ground is equal to zero volt and let's say this node is having the potential equal to v sub x so we are done with step number two we have assigned the potentials to the nodes we are having we are having one and two nodes and we have assigned vx as the potential to this node and we have assigned zero volt potential to this node we have taken it as the reference node so this is all for step number two in step number three we develop the kcl equation for each non reference node out of two nodes this node is the reference node and therefore there is only one non reference node that is this one so we will develop the kcl equation for this node and to develop the kcl equation we will first assign the currents to the branches which are connected to this particular node let's say current i1 is the current in this branch current i2 is the current in this branch and current i3 is the current in this branch now notice one thing i have taken the direction of current i1 i2 and i3 outwards that is all the three currents are leaving the node and this is happening because while developing the kcl equations you always have to take the potential of the node for which you are developing the kcl equation to be the largest and as vx is the largest current will leave this point now according to kcl the sum of entering currents is equal to the sum of leaving currents the sum of entering currents is equal to zero and the sum of leaving currents is i1 plus i2 plus i3 so sum of leaving currents is equal to the sum of entering currents which is zero so this is our kcl equation now we will move on to the step number four in which we will solve the kcl equation to have the node voltages and in this particular problem we are only required to calculate one node voltage that is vx now before solving the kcl equation i want to give you some important points let us say that this branch is the part of some network 
and potential at this point is equal to Vx and potential at this point is equal to Vy. Resistor having the value of resistance R is connected in series with the voltage source providing voltage V and current I is flowing in this branch. Now we can apply KVL. We will start from this point. We will write Vx. Then we have minus I multiplied to R. After this we have minus V and then we will equate with Vy. From here we can have current I. Current I will be equal to Vx minus Vy minus V divided by R. Now I will explain you how you can write the value of current like this directly. First thing you need to do is to subtract this point's potential and this point's potential. So we have Vx minus Vy. Then you need to focus on the voltage source you are having in the branch. And here the voltage source is opposing the current I because this is the positive terminal and we know current will leave the positive terminal. So this is opposing the net current that is I. Therefore we will have negative sign and then we will write the voltage V. After this we will divide by resistance R. So we have the same result like this but we have written it directly and not applied the KVL. Now we will take another case in which the polarity of the voltage source is reversed. We will write down current I. It is equal to Vx minus Vy. Vx minus Vy. Then you can see that the source is assisting the current I. Therefore we will write plus V then divided by resistance R. I have explained it because we are going to use it while solving the KCL equation. The KCL equation we are having is I1 plus I2 plus I3 equal to 0. Current I1 is the current in this branch. This point is having the potential Vx and this point is having the potential 0 volt. So we will write I1 as Vx minus 0. Then we will focus on the voltage source. It will provide a current in this direction which is opposite as compared to the direction of current I1. Therefore this voltage source will oppose I1. So we have negative of 4 then divided by value of resistor which is 1. Following the same process we will write current I2. It is equal to Vx minus 0. Vx minus 0. Then we will focus on this voltage source. It is providing the current in this direction which is opposite as compared to the direction of I2. Therefore this is opposing current I2. Hence we have negative sign 2 divided by the value of resistor which is 1. To get current I3 there is no need to perform any calculation because in this branch we are having one current source providing 2 amperes current. This means 2 ampere current is the current in this branch having this direction and the direction of 2 ampere current is opposite as compared to the direction of I3. Therefore I3 will be equal to minus 2 amperes. So here we have minus 2 equal to 0. From this you can easily calculate the value of Vx. You will find Vx is equal to 4 volts. And in the question it is asking us to calculate the value of current I. Current I is equal to current I2. So we need to calculate I2 and I2 is equal to Vx minus 2 divided by 1. So I2 is simply equal to Vx minus 2. This implies current I2 which is current I is equal to 4 minus 2 that is 2 amperes. So this is our answer.
and i hope you now understand the basics of nodal analysis in the coming lectures we are going to discuss more problems and more cases of nodal analysis